Some days ago, I found myself thinking that the Middle Ages should have had a pan-European gossip magazine, a tabloid-style publication to keep all the royal and noble houses up to date on each other's scandals. I can truly go back in time and make that publication happen, but one thing I can do is make silly stuff on a computer, so I did. My goal here is only to design a cover and make an ad to help sell it. I'm not actually making a full magazine, that would be way too much writing for my taste. But I still needed to know what going to be about, so I started by looking at what was going on a thousand years ago. Because a thousand is a nice round number, but 1023 and overall the 1020s were kind of poor in gossip material, at least from what can be found on Wikipedia, but then the 1030s really delivered. The main story is about our cover goal here, Byzantine Empress Zoe Prophyrogenita, who in 1034 had her husband killed. Maybe by poison or by having him drowned in the bath, different chronicles say different causes of death, and then she married her lover on the same day. It's also interesting to note that she was 56 at the time and her lover was 24. Now, Zoe's love life only started when she was 50 and she got married for the first time to Romanus, the guy she later killed. They had an unhappy marriage. Zoe's frustrated attempts at getting pregnant were probably not the only cause of that, but they certainly didn't help. Then they both started having affairs and things ended the way they did. And as I mentioned earlier, she wasted no time and remarried on the same day and had her new husband crowned emperor on the next day. The patriarch initially thought this was a bit too scandaled and refused to crown the new emperor, but after a bribe, he went through with it anyway. And then the new emperor thanked his wife for his new job by having her confined to the woman's wing of the palace, placed her under surveillance and kept her away from exercising any kind of political influence. Probably because he saw what happened to the previous emperor. Maybe. And since she was the, from the imperial bloodline and the key to the throne, she could very well just do it all over again. For another story, we also have a bit of apocalyptic panic in the year 1033. Christians had been expecting a second coming of Christ and the, and the world to end in the year 1000 because, according to the calendar, that was a thousand years after the birth of Christ. But that didn't happen, so scholars reinterpreted the thing to be a thousand years after his death. And as you may be guessing, it didn't happen either. And finally, for our third cover story, we have some troubled few years in the beginning of the decade for Poland and Polish rulers. In the previous decade, King Mieszko II had inherited a large kingdom and tense relations with the neighbors. The whole thing also caused a lot of family drama, because Mieszko had two brothers, and their father went against the Slavic tradition of dividing his domain among his sons, and instead gave everything to Mieszko. He was forced into a defensive war almost as soon as he sat on the throne, because the neighbors wanted to take back the territories his father had conquered, and then at the beginning of the 1030s, after losing some regions of his kingdom to the Holy Roman Empire, the Kievan Rus invaded Poland and placed his older brother on the throne. So he had to run away, but all those unfriendly neighbors left him with very few choices, and he ended up in Bohemia, where the Duke had him imprisoned and castrated in retaliation for Mieszko's father having had the former Duke and brother of that one tortured and blinded earlier in the century. Then, the older brother that had taken the throne was murdered and the Holy Roman Emperor offered freedom and Poland back to Mieszko on the condition that he would accept a demotion to Duke. As you can see, that's all very interesting and complex political history, but this is a tabloid, so I had to take the sensationalist angle. As for the design itself, I started by quickly blocking out a few ideas in Illustrator, as you saw earlier in the video, and when I found a layout that I liked enough, I started developing it. Since the main story is Byzantine, I looked for inspiration in Byzantine art and architecture, not only with the texture of the mosaic tiles, but also with the clearly delimited spaces for all different elements and the decorative borders.
And when I finally got it to look more like a magazine and less like a brochure for a conference about Byzantine art, it was time for the real fun. Because what's the best way to sell anything to an 11th century noble? An animated ad. It's a well-known fact that 9 out of 10 historians agree with. 11th century nobles just loved animated ads. The idea for this one is for Zoe to first look straight at the viewer, then lower one hand, show a little poison bottle, wink at us, and hide the poison again behind her scroll. Then the rest of the cover appears around her, and finally some kind of call to action shows on screen. I started by separating into different layers all the elements that are either going to move or hide something that's moving like the scroll that has to hide the poison bottle. And then with the clone stamp tool I just painted where it needed to be filled up so that when the elements do move it just doesn't look weird like she doesn't have a third arm <laughs> even behind the one that's holding the scroll and stuff like that. One last thing to do before moving on to After Effects and making all of this move is to make a little poison bottle in Illustrator. This is a vector drawing and for now it's not going to have the same texture as the, the picture, the tile picture, but that can be fixed in After Effects as you'll see.
After I was done animating Zoe, I wasn't too sure of how I wanted the rest of the animation to look like, so it took a bit of experimentation. I ended up giving the cover kind of a 3D look that would probably have worked better with an actual mock-up instead of this improvised solution, but the project was already taking long enough and I didn't want to delay it even further. And finally, our call to action. I have to admit that this was probably the hardest part of the project for me, not from a technical point of view, more from a moral point of view. I've only recently started learning to love typography and I'm still not very comfortable with it yet, but I'll get there. And this is it, I hope you enjoyed watching.